So yes, I'm doing the Offa's Dyke Path, 177 miles. Probably do it in 10 to 12 days, I'm guessing. Who knows? And yes, can't wait to get it started. It's almost like a coast to coast, in a sense. Almost like a Welsh border coast to coast. And we'll probably talk more about Offa's Dyke as we go along. But for now, I'm just eager to get started. So the footpath is currently travelling on top of Offa's Dyke. You can see down there, and if we look down the other side, it starts to give you some of the scale. Apparently this was up to 8 metres in height originally. And yeah, if everybody walks on the top of it, like I am doing now and no doubt many other people, I'm sure it uh, loses a few centimetres. Um, each each year possibly. We're definitely on the dike now. So the signs are good. It's my first kissing gate. Plenty of room. And great signage so far. But now I'm going to be walking through a housing estate for probably a mile or so before I get to the open countryside again. And the other problem with this is that I had to walk this way to get to the start. So yeah, it's a bit weird, you have to, and there's no other way to do it, you have to walk along the route that you're gonna do to get to the start, to do the route that you've just done. Very bizarre. Anyhow, talk later when the views are a bit more acceptable. So this looks ominous when you first see it, but we're going down here. And it is the official way, so don't let this hardware put you off. The old Y bridge that connects through to Chepstow. I'm enjoying this walk through the woods. I bet during the summer it's really uh, spectacular. But of course, where's Offa's Dyke? And of course I'm starting to realise that what is actually happening is the path takes you through and connects you a bit to the um, parts of the dyke that still remain. Yeah, so it's really the path that connects Offa's Dyke. Right, coming out of the woods now, and I've got to get through a gate, so I'll see you soon. So as you can see, we're a long way up from the River Wye. And this particular spot is called Winter's Leap because it's where Sir John Winter jumped to escape his captors of the parliamentaries in the mid 1600s. Not sure I'd want to jump in that uh, river. Hopefully it was cleaner then. And uh, that's if you actually made it down here.
loving that head. So I did mention before that the path was really about connecting the remaining sections of Offa's Dyke. And we're now at the Tidham section. And there's a little bit of blurb here that I think is actually quite helpful. So an earthwork built by Offa, the powerful Anglo-Saxon King of Mercia, 757 to 796. Established frontier between the kingdoms um, and the Welsh. That consists of a high bank and a wide deep ditch and can be traced with gaps from the River Severn to the Dee. This two mile section is in the care of English heritage. So yeah, we're back on the dike. So you can see here, this is a fairly recent plantation of a sign. And I nearly went that way, but I then realized, I think you can see here, or the opposite of this one's missing. And I think that would probably go more that way. That does look more defined. Oh, big question. They'll probably end up the same way. Yeah, looking at this, I think this must be the way, he says, hopefully. So we're coming to another stretch of the dike. Apparently this one's three miles long. And it actually says here that the dike, when it was ordered to be built, was for 82 miles, roughly along the English-Welsh border. I mean, that is some undertaking. Originally about 27 metres wide and 8 metres high, to serve as a symbol of Offa's great power. So I've been following this path for quite some time now and you kind of go, is this the dike? But of course, if you look over, in this instance, to your right, you actually see there's like a continuous line just above you. So I suspect the dike is on the right. Yeah, I've just come up here to investigate further. And for this to be you look back this way as well. I'd definitely say this is the, the dike. So guys, I think I might have spotted the devil. Are you the devil? No, I hope <laughs> not anyway. <laughs> yeah, I love this tree. Now the old tree. So yeah, Tony is not the devil, <laughs> as I thought he was. Uh, Tony's been telling me some interesting stuff in terms of what his project is. Um, yeah, do you want to tell me again what you're what are you uh, yeah, trying so to do? Doing the European high points, so climbing the highest mountain in every European country. Wow. So I've only done about, according to my list, there's 46 countries. Okay. And I've done, I think, 9 or 10. And which 9 or 10 have you done? So, then? see, Ben Nevis, uh, Mont Blanc, uh, Schneeska in the Czech Republic, um, Kneif, Luxembourg, and Bourtrage in Belgium. Wow, okay. Uh, Balanesti in Moldova. Uh, Hovela in Ukraine, back there anytime soon. So it's sure. Good to get that one out. Sure. Of the way. Um, so the 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 Belgian one, how, how high is that one then? Uh, Six hundred ninety-four meters. <laughs> okay. Like quite an interesting. Yeah. One because they built a little mound and a staircase going up to seven hundred meters. Wow. So okay. The, there's a platform at the top, and you're at exactly seven hundred meters, despite the height. Because we see in Britain, six hundred ninety-four. That's that would be a respectable mountain. Yeah. But this is actually on a flat plateau <laughs> and it's right by a road, so you can't really climb it. I had to park at the far end of the car park, so I felt I was walking to it. 
<laughs> okay. Maybe feel slightly better about it. Yeah. And so which which has been the, the hardest you've done so far then? Uh, Mont Blanc. Yeah. Without a yeah. doubt. Yeah. And that was actually what made me think of doing this. Because I'd researched the European high points many years ago. Um, but I never thought I'd complete them because I thought some of them would be out of my capabilities. Um, but eventually I did climb Mont Blanc and I realized I got one of the more difficult ones and I realized the others were actually within my reach then. Okay, so which one are you most looking forward to next or which one are you doing next even? Uh, unfortunately, uh, for obvious reasons, the project has been yeah, on hold, for the last hold. two years. And in fact, the summer 2020, I was actually due to go to Russia to climb Elbrus. Right. Which unfortunately, that was cancelled. And given recent events, I don't know when I'll be going back there. Sure. sure. So next one, um, tentatively thinking of Spain this year. Which yeah. Which is yeah. the Pico de Tede on Tenerife. Okay. So I'm hoping to go there this and, summer. And how high is that one? Uh, 3,718, I think. Meters? Yes. Yes. So pretty high. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but not particularly difficult. Okay. Uh, that's, okay. How, that's how mountains go. Okay. Right. Well, what can I say, Tony? It's been great meeting you. And yeah, uh, you best of luck with your project. Thanks very much. All the best. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd talk to you about weight whilst I'm going uphill and I can feel every gram on my back. So yeah, total weight is about 10 and a half kilos. Base weight is about eight and a third. Um, and I've worked out that every day I should reduce, my weight will be reduced by about a third of a kilo from the, uh, having my breakfast, my main meal, cup of soup, bag of tea. Yeah, all these little bits and pieces, um, protein bars. Yeah, so the more I walk, the more weight I lose, which is good news. Oh, feeling it now. And yeah, I was just thinking actually, my pack's taking on more weight of how warm it is I've put me taken off my uh, coat um, which I suspect weighs about another half a kilo some big funky gloves in there as well and yeah I've taken extra water on board so actually I'm probably near 11 and a quarter at the moment what a moment to, to choose to pile on the bounds as it were right you must leave me to it. Well, that's not something I've seen before. Like on the official... And it does look like an official sign almost. But anyhow, useful to know that Beaches Farm has a campsite. But it's way too early for me, which is a bit of a shame. So onward I must go. Ooh. And it's even telling me where I'm going this time. To Brockway and the Hudnalls. Well, this is quite a runway. And I have to say, this is one of the great things I'm um, really impressed with. The quality of hardware has been uh, really good and all the pathways kept clear, yeah.
Ooh. Some interesting cows down there. So I've got an interesting dilemma coming up. You can see behind me, just here, there's like another hill. Um, so it'd be like straight down this one. And then when I get to the bottom, I can either go up over the next hill or I go down to the river, which is down that way. And you are very close to the river. And the problem I've got is that quite often during this time of the year, particularly if we've had lots of rain, um, which I certainly have come across in other parts of the country, then it can be very sticky and very muddy. And after my experience of the Settle Carlisle, where I had to abandon the, the river walkway, I've decided not to risk it. I think it would be a great way to go during the summer. But I think, given where we are in the year, I'm going to go down here and up the hill behind me. Uh, so, to the hills we go! A bit worried those cows are sat down. Yeah, could easily rain later, I guess. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about. So, I've decided I'm going to do the higher route which is said via the Hudnells and that way is to the River Wirt Wye. I'm basing that decision on the time of year and yeah, I suspect it could be quite muddy near the river. So, down we go, but we'll be going back up again. So we're on a bridle way now, but what is more interesting is what we can see over here. Yeah, I was thought you were going to overtake me. That's why I stopped. Beasts coming up behind you. Yeah. So you, you're going that way or that way? That way. I'm going to have a catch on the track. I'm just waiting for the post. The post is just coming down. Come rest and watch the fairies play. I think I'm fine. I reckon it must be lit up at night as well. Just want to say thank you to the Public Rights of Way team at Gloucestershire County Council. Guys, you've been doing a great job. I have really appreciated some of these improvements. I would hate to think what this would be like if this wasn't in place. So the bridge down there is where we're heading. And we join back up with the, um, the main track. So I'll no longer be on the high route or the diverted route. Yeah, and the sun's come out as well. Well, there's enough signs there, isn't there? We've just come from here. We're meeting the route that's come from here. And we're going to head north to Monmouth. However, I do want to look at the Wheat Bridge.
So the River Wye at this point is flowing to the sea, or to the River Severn. And if we were taking the river route, we would have come along that bank there. However, what is interesting is that 99% of rivers do run to the sea. But the River Wye is the only river that runs in both directions. And it does it four times a day. Not as far as here, but as far as Tintal. I suppose because of where we are and how the landscape's being looked after by the Woodland Trust, the post, we have post now. I like the little carving. But it's 10 to 4 in the afternoon and my preference would be um, to get through to the end of that valley there which brings me to Monmouth and then I'd like to just get through Monmouth over the other side and into a place called Kings Wood and I think I could probably wild camp there but I'm just wondering am I pushing it too far it's gonna be dark between sort of six and half six there's still a way to go and the problem I've got is if if I go too far like get too close to Monmouth I think I'll run out of places to wild camp a bit of a dilemma at the moment. Anyhow, for now, I'm going to carry on hacking my way through. Less talking, I definitely need to get walking. Yes, yeah, so I've just put my uh, telephoto on just so it can see a little bit further. But I need to get right to the middle of that valley, right down the other end. The problem I've got is this hill here. Apparently, I go down and kind of that way and then over the top down the other side into Monmouth well I want to get beyond that I'm not sure I can do it in two hours but I'm gonna damn well try that's pretty clear isn't it and very polite access only thank you and offers dyke path I like the little footpath symbol to the railway there so I came through the village of Redbrook and the great thing is there they had a post office um, which sold general stores as well and uh, yeah it was really good timing um, I have got stuff on me but I didn't want to really deplete things just yet um, so I've got some of my favorites uh, one of them being yep I absolutely love these way nothing as well good thing to have and then I got a can of Rubicon um, which is down here now, carrying the, the empty can. Which looks rather strange. But I did get some funny looks, drinking a 500ml can, walking along the road, kind of like this, sucking out the can. Yeah, I think some people are thinking I was uh, maybe drinking a can of lager or something. But I can assure you, that's a can of Rubicon apparently to give me natural energy and it does seem to be working I feel fairly optimistic that I'll probably make Monmouth so yeah things are looking up and I'm still going up um, but I'm near the top of the, the sort of hill now and I think it goes along on a plateau for a bit and before descending to Monmouth so yeah let's see how I get on then So up ahead there's supposed to be something called the Roundhouse. Let's go and investigate. So there you go, we've got Monmouth down below. And in fact, I think I can see the bridge. 
So that sign and the sound of all the traffic should give you a clue they've arrived in Monmouth. And apparently there's been a boys school on here since the 1600s, but it was replaced in the 1800s. Yes, I've forgotten that. Henry V was born in Monmouth. And the other famous son was Charles Stuart Rolls of Rolls Rolls fame. This is one of three in Europe that are like this, in terms of the only remaining three medieval bridges with the uh, defences position on it.